Uh, thanks everybody for coming today. My name is Wing Guang, and I'm a fourth year biochemistry student in U of A. And my uh, supervisor is Dr. Spencer Gibson, and the project of this summer is the investigation of anti malaria drugs on hematological cancers. So let me just briefly introduce the cell line I'm using this summer to test the drugs. And they are BJAP and Draken cell line. BJAP is a B cell line established from a five year African girl with Berkeley lymphoma. And Berkeley lymphoma accounts for about 40% uh, of pediatric lymphoma cases. Draken is a T cell line established from a 14 year old boy with acute T cell leukemia. And this disease accounts for about 50% of the newly diagnosed diagnosed cases of the child acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So why are we interested in using anti-malaria drugs on these cancer cells? Well, uh, the idea came from this published paper claiming that a drug called methylcreen, which is used to treat uh, the anti-malaria, treating malaria, can preferentially target the acute myeloid leukemia cells while sparing the normal hematopoietic cells. So it is possible that other anti-malaria drugs can also have the cytotoxicity to the leukemia cells as well as other malignant cells in the blood. So on my list, I have methylquine, atolquine, permaquine, and terpenoquine. Especially on this paper, these groups mentioned that what methylquine does is that they, uh, they induce a process called lysosome membrane permeabilization, or LMP for short. As we all know, lysosomes Lysosomes are acidic organelles which contain a lot of capacitins and proteases. When LMP occurs, the membrane are disrupted and these proteases are released from the lysosomal lumen to the cytosol, which degrades the protein in the cytoplasm. When the LMP occurs, uh, it can uh, initiate a cascade, which then induces the mitochondria out of membrane permeabilization and that leads to cell death. So to maintain the lysosome integrity, it's crucial for maintaining the cell survival. Uh, now different kinds of stimuli have been proved to disrupt the lysosome effectively, such as the reactive oxygen species, the lysos lysosomal trophy detergent, and some kinds of cell death receptors. Since research has found that in cancer cells, the condition of the lysosome, lysosome membrane is altered in terms of the lysosome membrane protein and cholesterol content and the regulation of LMP is perturbed for maintaining a cell survival, we can actually develop no novel therapeutics by using a reagent that selectively kills the cancer cells while keeping the uh, normal cells unaffected. So that comes to the aims of the project, which are first to measure the cell death in cell lines treated with the anti-malaria drugs, and then to measure the LNP in cell lines treated with anti-malaria drugs effective to cause cell death. And I hypothesize that anti-malaria drugs can induce the LNP and kill both cell lines. So using flow cytometry, both cell lines stained with anaxin 5 and 7 AAD were treated with different concentrations of drugs for 24 hours to measure the percentage of cell death. As we can see here, for methylquine, and to find out with low doses, like uh, 10 micromolar to 20 micromolar, can effectively kill more than 70% of the cells, while for either tobacquan and primaquine, up to 60 micromolar fail to cause more than 20%. And also for these two drugs, as the doses get higher, the cytotoxicity increase is not obvious. <coughs> Similar to BJF cells, Jurgen cells are even more susceptible to methylquine and terpenoquine. With 20 micromolar here and 5 micromolar there, can kill almost 100% of the cells. We can conclude that methylquine and terpenoquine are outstanding for killing both cell lines, while the atobicline and primaquine are not. So, so low, the, low doses of methylquine and terpenoquine enables them to be pharmacologically achievable while the total quantum permaquine are not good candidates since their cytotoxic concentration may be harmful to normal cells as well. So uh, I will choose methylquine and terpenoquine to further examine their ability to induce the LMP. In this experiment, 
Both salons were uh, stained with a dyed called Lysol tracker red for 30 minutes, and these images were taken uh, 10 minutes after 10 minutes of the drug treatment under the confocal microscopy. When the Lysol tracker red uptake occurs in the acidic lysosomes, they become protonated and fluorescent. But if the lysosomes are no longer intact uh, when they're disrupted because of the drug treatment, they will be released back to the cytoplasm and quench the fluorescence. So here it is very straightforward to see that these two drugs are directly permeabilizing the lysosomes to turn off this bright spot in each of the acidic organisms. And similar result can be obtained for the drug itself. Again, using flow, cy flow cytometry, for the pigs here, uh, the fluorescence decrease after drug treatment, drug treatment are quantified by taking the mean value ratio of the drug treated sample to the DMSO control sample. From the columns here, LMP is induced very rapidly within 10 minutes, meaning that these drugs are very effective uh, disrupting the blood. And that comes to the second summary with, uh, that methylcrine to final point caused the LMP in both cell lines with contaminants because of these drugs are the killer molecule themselves to directly disrupt lysosomes. So in the future, normal hematopoietic cell death should be measured to ensure that these drugs are only effective on cancer or the leukemia cells but not on the normal cell. And appropriate doses may be applicable to the clinical uses. Since lysosomes have been proved by literature that they can be disrupted by different reagents like the drugs I use. And so the principle of selectivity can be achieved by finding a drug that only targets the cancer cells, that target the ultra lysosomes in the cancer cells, and this can be powerful for treatment. And also in my project, I also uh, concluded that drugs that can treat malaria may be used to treat chapel leukemia, such as the brachial lymphoma and acute cell leukemia, as well as the other hematological cancers. So, uh, as I need to acknowledge uh, my supervisor, Dr. Spencer Gibson, and Rebecca Dostnado, which is who is a PhD student in our lab and giving a lot of support this summer, as well as other lab members. Also, I need to thank the funding agencies. And thanks for your attention. Very interesting talk. I wonder, there's a lot of use of uh, things that are like anti-malarials for the treatment of autoimmune disorders. And in that case, they actually prevent the presentation of antigens so that uh, people have less autoimmune response. So I'm just wondering, do you think that that might be a problem to give people uh, a compound that on one hand might be good for cancer, but on the other hand might prevent them from presenting antigens. You mean they will, if they were used, they would have the, like, the, like two advantages, one can prevent cancer, the other one can prevent disorder? Yeah, I'm just not, I can see in the case of an autoimmune disorder, you want to prevent the immune response, but you might not want to do that in the context of a cancer, but perhaps over a short term it doesn't make much difference. Well, yeah, but I think um, when people talk about this, maybe the issue of the concentration that I mean that those use will be uh, you know, much more concerned. Because uh, people may ask why, I mean whether the concentration is appropriate for, 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 uh, for, for the uh, treatment. Because if you go beyond the safety concentration for treatment area, for example, they may be harmful to the normal cell. But for these uh, drugs, like what I have been tested, so they will be safe uh, within the concentration that can treat malaria. And they also have the, the other advantage when it comes to the patient that have cancer. So yeah, I think there will not be issues. Like after I select from a pool of drugs that can 
safely treat these cancers, as well as direct targeting the lysosomes, which is a very powerful tool. Okay, thanks. You tested four agents, two worked and two didn't. Is there some idea what's the difference between the two of them? Uh, well, um, for, for example, for a uh, I think that's a problem of the mechanisms. So for methylquin, for methylquin here, both the mechanisms of treating malaria and treating cancers are not clear. Even in this paper that they claim that these methylquin can target the AML cells, they don't know what exactly the mechanism is. I mean, they can induce the LMP, but how they induce the AMP is not clear. But as I predict, because they occur within just 10 minutes, they may just be the lysosome control detergent, as what I said here, because they're directly primitive lysosomes. They can disrupt this, they can affect the stability of the lysosomal membrane instead of inducing a signaling process, which occurs very slowly. So, yeah, but that's just what I predict. So the mechanism is not known already. So um, for these four drugs, I just pick whatever they can affect the cure itself. But it's still so far away for me to identify the mechanism here. Because for for example, um, these are total one to final way. For example, for example, it's not effective to kill this cancer cells. And but um, um, they're very different drugs. They yeah, the same family. When it, when it's a, when it's used to treat malaria, it's probably attacking a mitochondria complex. So it may not be useful to treat uh, the uh, cancer cells. And obviously, they are not targeting the cancer cells. The short answer is this was an expected result, and that we have to put in the 